Hi everyone, I'm Tom Cherry Holmes, and this is the first in what I hope to be an ongoing series of videos on vintage computer knowledge that may have fallen through the cracks. In this case, how to format, or low level format more precisely, an IBM PC XT, as in IBM 5160 based machine, 10 megabyte hard drive. If all you have is a copy of MS-DOS and debug.com. Now this might sound a bit strange for those of you who have done this back in the day. You probably did not use an IBM controller. You used something similar, like say an Adaptech ACB 2072 RLL controller or some controller from Western Digital, for example, which had a ROM BIOS that also exposed a user-facing program that you could get to right from debug. So you were able to go into debug and use the built-in ROM BIOS to trigger a low-level format. However, on actual TrueBlue IBM hardware, this isn't actually possible. Because while ZBAC actually did create the hard drive controller for IBM, IBM wrote the ROM BIOS software that is on the hard drive controller and IBM intended for you to use the IBM Advanced Diagnostics disk in order to do a full checkout of the machine and as part of that process do a low level format of the disk drive. You may have lost this disk or you may never have had it in the first place and you need to, re you need to recover this drive or to format a new drive. If you don't have this disk, then this video will show you what you can do instead by actually replicating the very routines that the advanced diagnostics disk does to low level format the disk in the first place. For the purposes of demonstration, we'll be using a copy of MAME using the IBM 5160 machine type. And I have created a compressed hard disk of the correct size, especially considering that the hard disk controller for an IBM PC XT uses fixed geometry and depending on the particular variant of the fixed disk controller that you may have inside the machine, it may be pre-selected for a particular capacity. In this case, this particular fixed disk card that's in this emulated machine is configured for a 20 megabyte disk drive with a geometry approximating 615 cylinders, four heads, and 17 sectors per track, yielding a total size of 21 million bytes, 411,840. So, with that, we'll go ahead and boot our emulated machine. You'll see a little bit of the basic system configuration that we have here. And you'll see that we go directly into ROM posting here. And this is indeed a true blue IBM XT with 640 kilobytes of memory. Now there's no floppy drive in the car in, in the in the system yet, so I'll go ahead and pop one in. We'll go into our software list, PC Disk Images, and we'll use a copy of MS uh, PC DOS 2.10 so that we're period, per, uh, period correct here. Here. Apologies. With that, we'll go ahead and reset the machine. And hopefully this time we'll come back up into MS-DOS. Now, as I said before, you may be using on a PC clone machine, you'll be using a NXT controller of some sort, which will have its own formatting routines built into the BIOS. For a real IBM PCXT, that is simply not the case. Again, because IBM expected you 
to use the advanced uh, diagnostics disk to format everything to do a full system checkout. We don't have that here. So we'll go ahead and boot into PCDOS 2.10. Now with PCDOS 2.10, debug is on the second floppy disk, which we've inserted into drive B here. And we'll go ahead and run it. Now, normally, you would do something like this. Or if you were running an Adaptic controller, you would use an offset address like this. But we can't do that here. There is no user-facing program inside the ROM BIOS. So, what we do instead is we call the routine. We write a little program to call the routines ourselves to format the disk. We need to do this in two steps because of the way that the IBM PCXT controller works. The first line here indicates that we want to send a command type of 7, which means format starting from a particular uh, drive, uh, drive cylinder head and sector. We want to also specify first track and the first drive. Now, we're going to be using int13h to call this service. Int13 is the uh, BIOS driven floppy and hard drive I.O. abstraction. And for hard drives, uh, disk IDs start at 80 for drive C, 81 for drive D, etc. We'll call int13, and after we call int13, we will call int3, which will ultimately drop us back to debug. Make sure that everything's right here. Everything looks okay from my end here. So we'll go ahead and run the program. Since we're running on an emulated machine, this will come back very quickly. On the real hardware, this can take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. And the hard drive light will be on while this happens. This is a low level format. We'll see that we came back. Our int3, int3, int3 got executed, and our drive is now completely blank. But we need to do something else. Now we actually need to make sure uh, that the first sector is completely zeroed out so that FDisk will handle it correctly. To do this, we need to write a buffer full of zeros that is exactly one sector long into the first track, the first head, and the very first sector of the disk, which corresponds to the boot record and also correspondingly to the partition table. For this, we'll go ahead and fill a buffer starting at our current segment address, offset 1000 here, from 1000 to 1200, which means 200 hex, which means 512 bytes, full of zeros. This sets aside our buffer for us that we're going to write with the following program snippet. The first two commands, the first two, um, the first two uh, instructions here are to reset the disk controller entirely and, and just to reinitialize the disk controller to make sure that everything is back at zero before we actually issue the write. The next command is the right sector command. AX being, uh, giving us the uh, right sector command. BX being the address of our buffer inside of our current segment. And finally specifying our drive. And again, int 13, int 3, int 13 does the right sector command, int 3 will bring us back to debug. Again, just like before, we go ahead and execute the program, and we will see that everything comes back 
exactly as it is here. Now the disc is actually ready. We can actually go directly from this point into FDisk, but if you want to go ahead and reboot, you can. We'll go ahead and go back to drive A, which contains FDisk. Run FDisk. We're going to do everything as default. We're going to use option number one because option number one will create a single partition. It will create a single primary partition, the size of the entire drive, and mark it as active automatically so that it will boot. Yes, we do. Go ahead. System will now reboot. And with this, once this system reboots here, we should be back into MS-DOS. And actually, if we go ahead and to type C, we'll see that our drive actually exists. But it's not ready yet. We need to format it. Now we can do the high-level format. And since we do want to boot from this disk, we'll go ahead and, and uh, write a system to it. And we'll go ahead and write a volume label to it as well. Format will load from the floppy. Press any key to begin formatting. On a real system, this will take approximately 8 to 10 minutes. Since we have an emulated system here, this goes quite a bit faster. Give it a label. And we can see here, because this was a 20, uh, 20 megabyte, uh, control, uh, 20 megabyte at IBM fixed disk controller, we have roughly 21 megabytes of space free. There's our hard disk ready to go. We can go ahead, make a DOS directory if we wish to. And copy the contents of our DOS disk over onto the hard drive. I hope this has been uh, extremely informative for you guys. I hope somebody finds it useful. I will be making more of these as I think of them. Uh, there's a lot of bizarro, arcane knowledge that has otherwise been left to antiquity that sometimes needs to be unearthed to deal with a lot of these vintage machines. So I think it's a good thing to take and make videos of all of this demonstrating that in some of the strangest circumstances you can work around things. So now we have that completely comp uh, copied. We'll go ahead and delete command com from that DOS directory because we don't need it. There she is and if we go ahead and reboot the system I will actually do this from inside here. We'll do a complete cold boot here with a full memory test and everything. And if everything is working as expected, oop, let me uh, let me empty that, please, empty slot. We'll see here that we booted from the C drive. Okay, guys, I hope this was uh, I hope this was informative. Uh, look forward to more of these. Uh, if you want to give me suggestions on what to do here, be feel free to leave in the comments below on other uh, on other subjects you'd like me to tackle. Thank you very much for watching.